Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's talk about the four tissues of the body. Now, your body's made up of 30 trillion cells. Of these cells, there's around about 200 individual cell types. If you were to group these cells in accordance with their function, what you get are the four tissues of the body. Now, these four tissues include nervous tissue, muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, and connective tissue. So let's have a quick run through of each one. If we start off with nervous tissue, what we're talking about here is that of the nervous system. So this is made up of neurons and glia. Now glia is Greek for glue. They're the supporting cells of the neuron. There's many different types, oligodendrocytes, Schwann cells, ependymal cells, astrocytes. These are all different types of supporting cells of the nervous system. And then the functional cell of the nervous system, the cell that allows for communication to occur, this is the primary function, as you can see of nervous tissue, they're called neurons. Now, these individual cells coming together, forming the functional tissue, forms the brain, forms the brain stem, forms the spinal cord, and also forms the nerves that come out and away and also the nerves that come back in. Of the brain, there's 12 pairs of nerves that go out and away and back in. They're called the cranial nerves. I've done a video on that. And we've got the spine with the spinal nerves as well. So this is nervous tissue. When we look at muscle tissue, muscles allow for movement. They allow for us to be able to do something. There's three different types. We've got cardiac muscle. This is the muscle that makes up the heart. We've got skeletal muscle. This is muscle attached to bones, allows us to be able to move our skeleton. And we've got muscle that lines our hollow organs, such as the organs of our GI tract, even the organs of our uh, urinary tract, such as our urethra and ureter, for example, or the reproductive system. These muscles, smooth muscle, like I said they're called, lining the hollow organs, they allow for contraction and relaxation to move products through. If we're talking about that of our gastrointestinal tract, it allows us to move foodstuffs or fecal material through in a process called peristalsis. So again, muscle tissue there for movement, three different types, cardiac, skeletal, and smooth. Move on to epa epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue forms boundaries between environments. So for example, you've got epithelial tissue that lines your skin, separating the outside world from the inside world of your body. You've got epithelial tissue of your kidneys, you've got epithelial tissue of your lungs, you've got epithelial tissue anywhere in which there's two separate environments, epithelia sets that boundary. Now, sometimes you want a boundary and allow things to go back and forth. Sometimes you set a boundary where you don't want anything to go back and forth. This is still the function of epithelial tissue and the individual epithelial cells, but you can have epithelia in different shapes and layers. So for example, you can have simple squamous epithelia. So simple means one layer. So if you have simple epithelia, it's just a single layer of cells. If it's squamous, squamous it means they're squished like pancakes. You can have stratified squamous. That means they're stacked on top of each other. You can have simple cuboidal, shaped like cubes, or you can have simple columnar, for example. You can also have pseudostratified, where it looks like there's multiple layers, but there's only just one layer. Or you can even have transitional epithelia, where it starts as one type and turns into another type. For example, if it's flat in one layer, it wants things to go through, such as diffusion to occur. You're gonna find this in your lungs, where we want gases to exchange. Stratified squamous, where there's multiple layers, well, we don't want anything to go through, so this is gonna be a protective layer, such as our skin. When you've got a bigger cell in the epithelium, that means there's gonna be contents of the cell, organelles, subcellular structures for things to happen, that means these cells are gonna produce something. So that means those are the cuboidal and columnar are gonna produce things, and they're often the uh, mucus secreting cells, or even the cells that make up glands of the body. All right. Last one is connective tissue. You can see connective tissue supports, protects, and binds. And there's heaps of different types of connective tissue. Bone is connective tissue, tendons are connective tissue, fat cells are connective tissue, and even blood is connective tissue. So that means connective tissue can be solid, semi-solid, or even liquid. So then what makes connective tissue connective tissue? Well, connective tissue is made up, up of gels and fibers, okay? So the gels, are gonna be, think of jelly, for example. It's what you embed everything in. It's like the concrete, for example. And fibers are what you put inside of that gel to change the consistency. You could put elastic things in that gel to make it bendy and stretchy. You could put very solid things in that gel to make it very strong and immovable. This is how we go from having bone or blood, it 
It just depends on the types of gels and fibers embedded in. So this is a quick run through of the four tissue types of the body.